Hi, I'm Stuart from Hike Micro. The NGO have asked me to take a look and explain some of the technology that goes into thermal rifle scopes. When you're choosing a thermal rifle scope, it's really important that you hit a minimum level of specification that's going to give you the image detail and magnification that allow you to identify whatever it is you're shooting at. You can't just see a blob and start shooting at it. So we need to make sure that we're getting the detail in the picture and we're also clear and 100% confident before we start shooting. In my opinion, the minimum resolution sensor that you need for shooting over any kind of distance is a 384 by 288. With an air gun and closer distances, if you're rat shooting, you could get away with a slightly smaller sensor, but anything at distance, if, you're, if you dip below that 384 sensor, you're gonna end up with a very, very grainy image. You're not gonna be confident what you're shooting at. It's really not up to the job. If you want to use thermal to shoot with, there's two types of technology you need to consider. The first one is the front clip-on. So this sits ahead of a, an optical rifle scope. They all have different systems for removing them. You can quickly clip that on, secure it. It transforms your existing optical scope into a thermal rifle scope. You use the magnification of the scope and the crosshair. You will need to zero the unit into the scope. So that can be done either with the mount or with software in the device. Your rifle scope is then looking at the screen inside the thermal unit giving you the thermal image, the detection, and using the crosshair for your point of impact. You can then shoot at night, and if you want to, simply clip it off and shoot using your normal day optic during daylight hours. The advantage with this system is familiarity. So this is a conventional optic. When you mount it and you set it up, that's exactly the same zeroing process. You then just add the mount on the front. There's a small amount of calibration to match the unit to the scope. Make sure that your point of impact doesn't change as you clip this on. You can then shoot all day with this configuration, convert into a thermal rifle scope at night using this add-on, and then you're away to shoot all night again. The other option is to use a dedicated rifle scope, like this one. So these come with a way of attaching it onto your rifle. Normally that would be a Picatinny rail. So if you're using something like a Tika T3, you may want to, uh, to get a Picatinny rail it's gonna make it universal and an easy platform to put your any rifle scope onto. The advantage with using a dedicated rifle scope is that it's gonna give you the edge on thermal performance. Because you're manipulating the unit directly, you've got a lot more control over the image that you see inside, rather than having one system that's using another system and the two are kind of disjointed. This is more, one unit does everything. You've got a wider range of magnification that's built into the unit and it's going to give you an advantage in the performance overall of the, uh, the image. The downside is shooting with this during the day, you're then limited to that lower resolution thermal image. You don't get the option unless you use a quick detach mount, which you know, it might guarantee that it will come back to zero, it might not. You couldn't just clip it off and know 100% that your scope is still zeroed for daytime shooting. But you know, in terms of performance, a dedicated rifle scope probably has the edge over a clip-on. In terms of convenience, I would use this system, clip it on to shoot at night, clip it off during the day, you've then got the best of both worlds, you can get an excellent optical scope, you can get the clip on, and you can, uh, you can have the best of both worlds. The unit that I'm holding is the Hike Micro Thunder 35. This is a really flexible unit, it allows you to use it as a rifle scope with this lens system. You can simply screw that off and interchange it with this system, which then allows you to clip it onto the front of an optical rifle. So this multi-use system is brand new and it's, uh, it's, it's just an indication of how thermal technology is changing as time goes by and it's also becoming a lot more affordable. So this unit with all three options of lens system is retailing around £2,400. So you're then buying effectively a thermal front clip-on, a thermal rifle scope and you can also remove the rail and use that as a thermal monocular. So it's a really high performance, it's a really flexible unit, and it's actually really quite affordable as well. For gamekeepers, this is a great unit. You're gonna have the option of using it in, in a couple of different ways. Hike are gonna release higher resolution, bigger front lenses over the next couple of months. So if you want the ultimate of magnification and identification and detail in the image, that's coming. But for what we're looking at today and the ways that you can use it, the different ways you can use it, and the price point that it's hitting, 
this is a really, really strong product and it's worth uh, getting down to your local shop and taking a look through one. A lot of people ask us about the best way to zero a thermal rifle scope. Obviously, the image doesn't react, the sensor doesn't react as well to a paper target because it's trying to measure the, the temperature difference that's caused by different colours of ink on the paper. So we actually recommend that you use a small square, an inch and a half, two inches of tin foil with the, uh, that's taped onto a piece of card. That gives you a flat spot that the sensor doesn't react to and it's clearly defined, so it's easy to pick that out. You know, these things can be difficult to zero. You want to start nice and close and then move further back as you get on the paper. You don't want to be trying to use this like an optical scope because you don't see as much detail in the image. You know, it's a very monochromatic process. It's just black and white. So you need something that reacts in black and white. Like I say, you can use a heat pack if you want. We find tin foil is the best. Tin foil, start close and do it patiently and methodically. Work to the longer distances and use the, um, the picture in picture actually as well. If you activate that, it gives you that. If you're using a higher mag, gives you a broader picture and helps line everything up as you're, um, as you're bringing it in and line it up consistently as you make your adjustments. Um, other than that, it's a really easy process to zero because you're just using the X and Y axis as you would in an optical scope. So yeah, I, that's the advice. I, it can be a really frustrating process. The first thermal that you buy, you're trying to get it zeroed. You don't really know where the bullet's going. So you want to start with, and it's, and it's difficult to actually pick out on a conventional target, you need something that the, the thermal will react to. So like I say, we recommend tin foil, we recommend starting close, we recommend um, working patiently further and further back until you've, got your, um, until you've got it set up and it's sorted. Thanks for watching our introduction to thermal rifle scopes. I hope you found the video useful. Just a quick plug, we're offering a free USB power bank, which helps to double the battery life of any of our units to any NGO member who buys a Hike Micro thermal product. You can find the details in the description of how you're going to claim that. Thanks a lot for watching.